Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode I am going to attempt to send three Kerbals over to lunar orbit and hopefully to rendezvous with the lunar lander that has been deposited there for their use. Now I have assigned the crew. It is Matford Kerman in command. Haddock Kerman is the command module pilot and Orson Kerman is the technically the lunar module pilot but uh, obviously not an actual pilot and won't be doing any piloting. Matford Kerman will be doing the piloting in the lunar module as was true in the Apollo missions as well. Um, the rocket is the Shakti rocket. The, the capsule I have named Gladys and that is not in reference to Portal. It is in reference to the golem in the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett and so that is how that is. We have, well, we have the Centaur stage, the RL-10 stage with 18 minutes and 45 seconds worth of fuel uh, being the whole business really. So uh, you can see here that stage is what's going to complete the transfer. We'll start off the transfer with the J2s and then we're going to transfer to the moon using the RL-10 stage. We're going to get into orbit around the moon using the RL-10 stage and we will use the RCS fuel with that stage to rendezvous with the target vehicle, the lunar lander, and then we will subsequently, or maybe we'll have the lunar lander rendezvous with this. Uh, we'll see. And both of them will be about the same mass because they both have this stage attached to them. And then we will uh, proceed to return using the RL-10 stage. Uh, we do have an additional pack of RCS fuel here so that's a thing and that is to facilitate the maneuvering towards the whatever we are going to maneuver to in orbit around the moon. I don't know if the RCS ports are going to survive being placed here hopefully they will but uh, that is something well, we'll test on the fly. Oh, I do need to load up on lithium hydroxide here. Um, probably don't need too much. It doesn't change our delta V. Well, it changes our delta V a little bit. So let's be... It always unloads the lithium hydroxide for some reason. Uh, altogether, our tack light support system is uh, food, water, and oxygen for... You know, we really don't need that much lithium hydroxide. Maybe... Well, I'll just keep what I've loaded. Anyway, uh, we've got ample amounts of food, water, and oxygen, as you can see, and the electricity we find once we extend the solar panels. Okay, so that is the state of things, and we'll just have to see how it works. Uh, to say that I'm nervous about this is would be an understatement. Yep, uh, first, first mission with three Kerbals. We could do tests, but, you know, this is a simulation. This is Kerbal Space Program. Yep, it is the command module uh, from the Apollo mission in there, and that's the launch assembly and all that. But uh, below the heat shield, everything has changed. We'll we'll go over the details once we are up in orbit, hopefully. Okay, here we go. Haddock, Matford, and Orson are ready. Thrall is up. SAS is on. Well, let's hope this uh, rocket works exactly the way it has before without any nasty surprises. All right. Hey, yep. F1A ignition and launch. Okay. Handing over to Smart ASS. I guess this is not going to be a thing. Remote Tech is not interested in this right now, which is fine. Local control anyway. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. Rocket is performing nicely. Okay, we're getting a plume here. Uh, 
Paddock, Matfert, and Orson are all business, looks like. Okay, our separatrons, not separatrons, our decouplers are overheating a bit, but that's nominal. We've seen that before. Two seconds. One second. And booster set. Still a little bit close, but they are clear. Okay, going to 35. So it is my hope that the Apollo capsule will survive re entry on normal trajectory with the ablative shielding it has on its stated Apollo command module heat shield and well it's not entirely fake I've brought it down before this is the FASA command module and heat shield and I've done it with uh, 0.90 configurations so it should be alright which is why we haven't tested it ahead of time but you know still a bit of a risk I hope just staging it normally works. I think it works. I think that's how it works. I mean, I'm looking at the launch escape system, I mean, and that's what's coming up soon. I think just staging it will shoot it off. Okay, set. And J2 ignition. Okay, let's uh, separate the launch escape system. Yeah, okay, off it goes. and off to the side so it's harmless very good alright the J2's are working their way up to orbit and it will be orbit on this stage we'll need some of it left over in order to get us to the next thing we're only oh yeah we do have uh, little boosters these guys to help us out selling the fuel down for the start of TLI, the translunar injection burn. I expect to have about 400 meters per second left over. Alright, well I'll see you once we get close to the end of this burn. Okay, we've got about a minute left here. Uh, 17 seconds until apoapsis, but we'll go a little bit beyond apoapsis as usual. So we, we are carrying the Saturn instrument unit uh, just in case here. Not strictly necessary. Might have been better off dumping it just for Delta V reasons because it's pretty heavy. Does allow this to launch Kerbals who aren't pilots though, in theory. Could have a, a reason for that. The life support is in here by the way, as is of course the, the what you call it, heat shield and all. There are uh, essential stuff here. We're not going to end up with the Delta V left over in the stage that I wanted. But uh, we'll get, we'll take whatever we can get. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Shutdown. Okay, 245 by 221. 85 tons to orbit it looks like though it's not really fair because we're sort of carrying this stage okay well let's plot for the moon okay so here's the plot it's uh, 3151 meters per second altogether um, we'll probably have to do it in two burns and so the fact that I've decided to meticulously plot a free return transfer so people in the comments don't go shouldn't you have put it on a free return transfer probably was uh, unwise of me but uh, anyway it's uh, will save me some grief later on I'm sure but uh, in any case uh, we've got a moon periapsis of 64 kilometers or so and uh, the free return is at uh, 47 kilometers so we'd have to loosen it up because 47 would probably kill the Kerbals uh, but uh, just a 0.1 meter per second difference would have that periapsis much higher instead of just a little bit higher so this is the plot, but it's probably uh, pointless because we're going to have to do it in two burns. Anyway, there we have it.
I'll replot it, it'll be fine. And it looks like we've got a good deal all together. Before I forget, I should turn off the... Yeah, let me shut off the fuel from the command module. Really should disable the command module's RCS port as well, or it'll confuse things. Those RCS ports aren't meant to be used at this time. Well, putting the RCS ports out there uh, turned out to be not a problem, so that's a good thing. I was a little bit worried about that. That was probably the dodgiest part of the launch, putting the RCS ports there. Okay, let's go node. Oh, let's not have Smart ASS do that. RCS on, and... Oh, I forgot to reconfigure these ports down here. God, that's silly. Forgot to reconfigure the J2's RCS ports. Oh, we've got uh, carbon dioxide buildup. Hold on, let me get the scrubber on. Okay, CO2 scrubber is active. Don't know if that'll work out properly or not. We've got lithium hydroxide there. Should be okay. Okay, I think the rest of this turn can be done with the engine gimbling on the J2, so I'm going to take RCS off. I'm going to ignite the Ullage rockets now. And ignition. Okay, off we go. TLI. Oh no! What just happened? Oh no, that was uh, standard cutout. Shh. Fuel all out. Uh, let's transfer that MMH and N204 up, shall we? So that we have a full tank up here at least. Okay, out, out. Alright, well, that's only a little bit, but every bit, bit counts. So, uh, separate. And... Ignition. Should have just put RCS on before igniting this one, but that's alright. Okay, so this is the actual spacecraft, if you will, that is being sent to the moon, and which will actually return. This part will be uh, burning up in the atmosphere. Yeah, I'm not sure about the limitations of using Hydrolox in this way, or the RL-10s. Any information about that would be appreciated. If I'm doing this completely wrong and doing something that simply cannot work in real life, I would like to know. But I don't see any particular obstacle. So I'll see how far I can go on this burn and then we'll probably have to go around and replot. Okay, we are about halfway through this burn, and it looks like uh, we are T plus five minutes on the node, so let's have engine shut down, and I will replot for the remainder of the burn to the moon. Okay, this is pretty good. It puts us at 97 kilometers around the moon, and the free return periapsis is 118, so uh, high and safe this time, and only needing a little bit of... Uh, adjustment in order to get it into the atmosphere. So that's a pretty good one. We'll take that and we'll continue with this burn in 3 hours and 13 minutes. I'm a little bit worried about the electric charge situation. I... yeah, I mean, of course we haven't uh, flown with three kerbals like this before. Now all of our solar panels aren't pointing at the sun right now, obviously. Uh, they're obscured mostly, and that's because we're pointing at the maneuver node. But, yeah, it's a bit of a worrisome situation right now. We'll see. If we have to abort and come back down short, we can probably do that. I'm pretty sure this fuse box is not telling me the truth about anything. It's not taking into account the the drain from the life support. The drain isn't too bad. It's 1.3 per second it looks like. I think our solar panels should be able to handle that if they're flush against the sun. Okay, uh, here we go. Ullage rockets. 
And ignition. Okay, here we go. I'll try and cut it off as close to the node indication as possible. And then we'll correct using the RCS. I've sealed off this tank, so we're just using this tank. That's probably for the best. Okay, getting ready. Shut down. Okay, 1.6 is not bad. Let's see what we've actually got going here. Come on, auto saving. All right. Uh, that's not great. Let's get to the RCS on. Okay, it looks like we're too far. So backing off a bit, and it definitely looks like we're too far because we're on a crash course on this side. So we actually overburned. Let's take a good look at our approach to the moon. Looks like uh, we're on a pretty fast course here. Two days and 17 hours. That's a bit worrisome because it means we're going to take a lot more to slow down. Well, maybe not a lot more. Just more. There's the Dorful. Let's set that as a target. Not bad as far as inclination is concerned. Not bad at all. Okay, well, that's uh, low enough. Let's see if I can plot for the intercept on the on the orbital burn. See if we can hit that lander. Okay, let's just uh, plot for this first and then we'll see what we need to do after this. Okay. Hmm, we've got spare RCS bursts. But, yep, we're on our way to the moon now. We need to worry about our electric charge situation. Okay, that looks good. Looks like we've got a little bit of restoration of our electric charge there. I think we should just replot around the moon. Okay, let's go over there. Looks like our delta V situation is good as well. Moon periapsis is now looser than planned, and that's probably be you know, that's because we spun around with the RCS like that. Just to note, our delta V is depleting because of hydrogen boil off, but hydrogen boil off isn't too severe on a trip to the moon. It's uh, it's more severe per month than per hour per day. On the launch pad it's severe because it's worse in atmosphere but it's not as bad in vacuum. Okay, well now our moon periapsis is at 45 which is a little bit low. Definitely a little bit low. I think we're gonna have to get both half of both halves of this mission to uh, cooperate on the docking and use both of their fuel to avoid uh, losing too much fuel at either end. Well now there's a little bit more constructive we can see the marker going around and around and around waiting for a chance. That's probably gonna be the one but let me see if I can go around one more time. No, that's going to end up crashing. Okay. So we'll be in a very loose orbit. I mean, compared to, you know, your standard moon mission. Okay, 0.6 kilometers. Sounds good. We'll have to do a pretty significant burn to match velocities with it. And we will have to use RCS to sell the fuel down for that. So from now on you might not see the RCS ports actually firing, but they are consuming the fuel and we are using fine controls here. Alright, lunar orbit insertion time. Here it is. And Ullage rockets. And ignition. Now we are aiming for a 
rendezvous here, so it's not directly at our retrograde vector. We may have started this a little bit early. Let me take it off of node there and back to SAS. Oh, I lost the target. Ah, oh, crud. There's no actual throttling. Alright, we'll take that. Okay, target. Hmm. 172 point something. Okay. Let's try and correct with RCS. Hmm. Okay, stop firing. Stop firing. Just drift. 20 kilometers. Well, I can get 1.4 at a cost of 56.1 meters per second, but that would require a restart of the main engines. Hmm. Well, I guess it's worth it. And we do have 10 relights as far as I know, so... Okay, let's see how close we got with that. Uh, what? Uh, we got further away? That's not right. It's cheating me. Totally cheated me. That... That's not right at all. Hold on, I don't want it to constantly fire in the RCS. Uh, I'm going to fill up the bottom tank just so that nothing weird happens. 20 kilometers again. We wasted 50 meters per second for nothing, apparently. Okay, I think I've got something here. So we're going actually prograde. I forgot we're going around the opposite direction, but if I use some RCS, it looks like we can handle this. Okay, 600 meters sounds satisfactory to me. RCS off. And let's head over there and prepare to uh, Kill velocity with respect to the target, which is not going to be this bad, but it's still going to be harsh. Probably anywhere up to 200 meters per second, I'm expecting. Okay, here we go. Five minutes left until the encounter. Let's make sure we're pointed the right way, first, first things first. And so, uh, caps lock for fine controls, and we will start the spin off. Might take a couple of minutes to get there. It's looking to take a little bit more delta V than I expected. Yeah, it's more like 300 meters per second instead of 200. That's a shame. That's a bit rough. Uh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Let's have target negative relative velocity. I want to be pointed right at that vector when we lit the en light the engines. Okay. Margins a lot tighter than I'd like them to be. Okay, taking smart, uh, taking fine controls off, and smart ASS off. I'm selling the fuel down to the tune of one meter per second. Can I have SAS on? And ignition. Okay, one meter per second. All right. Closest approach distance is still 
point uh, 630 meters so that's fine Got turn around, let it turn around, and point at the dorsal. Still got a decent amount of momethylhydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide, so I'm hopeful that we are okay on the whole thing. Uh, Smarty SS does not seem to be doing it right now. Here, let me help you. All right, all right. I'll give you a full, full use of the thrusters. Just get it there, please. Okay, back to fine controls. Let's switch over to the dorsal. So here's a Dorfel. Still don't know whether that's going to work out or not. The, whatchamacallit, the docking mechanism. The drogue. Let's see. Well, okay, there's our target. So we've got 91 there. But we really can't use the fuel up here. Let's at least get it pointed in the right direction. I think we'll probably do most of the docking stuff with the other side. Smart ASS off, SAS on, probably RCS off now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, well, I'll leave SAS just for the heck of it. Okay, back to the other side. You can see the closest approach distance decreasing. And if that closest approach distance is accurate, 6 meters is not bad. Otherwise, I'm just going to be patient. Let me grab a book to read, because I'm not time warping and I'm not doing anything that might hurt things. This is a delicate operation and I'm going to treat it that way. Okay, it looks like we're all lined up. Uh, still two minutes to go here. I'm decelerating still using caps lock we're at a closest approach distance of about one meter the Kerbals seem to be enjoying themselves I don't know if that's a good sign maybe so I'm just holding down the N key gradually decelerating We've got two very large bodies. Of course, each of these portions is... Well, I mean, it's not that large. I mean, the command module with the service module would have been heavier than this is right now. Okay, I think it's definitely time to target the drogue and make sure we're controlling from our little probe. Okay, about 100 millimeters now on the closest approach distance. That's hopeful. I really would like to dock up without any adjustments. Hold on, things are not going quite well anymore. How did that happen? Something seems to be not quite right here. There goes the no correction version of things. Looks pretty lined up to me. Let's get uh, fine controls back on. That's really inaccurate right now. Well, here goes nothing. SAS off. Slowing down. All right, we're docked. Wow, okay. 
Whoo, all right. RCS off. We're gonna have to rebalance the fuel, make sure the fuel gets into the right places. I think we've diminished some of this fuel, for instance, in turning around a bit. So let me handle that first. Okay, I think we're all set. Let me transfer Kerbals. Let's see if we can do this. Matt Furt has transferred. I think it's uh, Haddock. Who is our pilot? And who is the scientist? I think Haddock was the scientist. Well, let me transfer. And hope that's right. So, Haddock and... Matford. Okay. One of them has to be a pilot, so that'll be fine. And of course, we will still have control because there is a Saturn instrumentation unit there. So if it turns out that I'm wrong and that Orson is the scientist, it'll, it'll still be fine. Okay. So our first lunar orbit rendezvous is a success, and we'll be able to proceed with a lunar landing. I think I'll have to handle that in the next episode. Uh, this whole docking procedure took a while, and anyway, this has been quite an adventure already. Okay, so I think I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.